In the first part of this video series, we talk about aerial searches. They are all about indices. So anything that you search in here that has index is going to give you good performance on the search. And we contrasted that and show the complementary quick filter, which is the one that individually index every part of the payload. So let me actually pause this video and look into the payload of any message in here. Uh, we look here oops, inside the payload and we have that uh, 172.16.60.60. Uh, so if we want to search in for stuff that are not indexed, it's not a great idea to use quick filter. You'll, you'll have an index in the other one, but it actually proved the point. Let me actually uh, uh, play this back and do a quick filter on 172.16.60.60 for the last 24 hours. And, and then we're going to perform the same search. Notice that it's taking a while, 32%. 38%. We have our current statistic open and it finished in 10 seconds, right? And it found all these, you know, 25 pages of, of actual events. Again, we were looking inside the payload for that string. However, if we do the very same search, let's actually start with a clean slate and we are going to search by source IP because it's index 172.16.60.60 at the filter we go back 24 hours uh, right here to make it the same as the other one and perform the search and in just two seconds we get uh, faster result again because it is index. So I hope that this bring the point across also Everything we have said for logs, in terms of quick filters, add filter, and even AQL, is applicable for network activity. So in the same way we have index searches in here, and we can combine them as well. You notice that we have the same click filter, and these are the properties, the custom properties that are indexed uh, by flows, but it's the same thing as, as logs. So even for AQL, it's the same. The same topics uh, apply to all of them. So I'm actually going to use some of the slides from the master class to explain some things about how quick filter works. Quick filter tokenizes what you know the entire payload. So this string, hello world, I am a string, it f takes out pieces like uh, all the exclamation uh, special character exclamation pipe column semicolon double slash you know square bracket uh, curly braces uh, parentheses all that are not tokenized so from this string these are the things that are tokenized on this example in here we see that this is what gets uh, tokenized and there are other rules that I'm going to go quickly about it uh, the one that is important is that if you put two strings, either individually put or between double quotes, and you put in capital and, you are performing a Boolean and search of the two. So it has to have this string and this other string as well. The individual components are not case sensitive in the indexing, and similar to what Google does, but uh, the operators are. Again, like in Google. And you also have the not operator and you can combine them with uh, parentheses in there. One thing is that if you need to search for a one specific, let's say that you want to search for this semicolon, you need to actually escape it with a backslash. Okay, don't forget that. There are more wild cards that you can play in here. And of course there are regex that you can also use in here and some you know, even more specific things like user, hacker, uh, between quotes and uh, and then with the tilde 2, 
means that the word, the word user and hacker are at most two words apart. So, so it can get as granular as you may want. Here are some more uh, examples of the type of rule. This is particularly peculiar. You know, if you this this string is here A B C dash E F G two, you will think well the the the, the hyphen is going to be not tokenized. Uh, not the case because the second word ends or contains a number, so that's what makes that that uh, be retained, right, as a token. Uh, dots are kept, except the dot that is at the end. If you will have one point, two point, three point, four, and then a point or a dot, then that one will not be uh, tokenized. Okay. Some more examples in here for you to see. Uh, notice that when you are not sure about the word, you can actually put wild characters before and after, and that will expand your search. Again, if you don't start like this and then modify the, the complexity to keep your searches as efficient as possible. Okay. Also remember that quick filter works on a retention of 30 days. Uh, if you are searching for something uh, that is th that takes beyond the 30 days, then the quick filters are not going to be as efficient as uh, they normally are. And again, remember that if we were searching for this particular string, if we don't put it between quotes, it's going to look for audit or log or was or clear. So. I mean, just to show some examples, we you can be searching, if you were doing this search like this, and then you put and, and then perform the search, that, that should give you exact uh, the, the exact uh, same results. Let's actually go back 24 hours. And notice that it is down here. But this uh, is a curiosity because we've been doing some searches and there are logs on it. We are getting hits on that uh, as well. But this is the event that we were looking in the first part of the video exactly in the same way. Just to show the flexibility and using the Boolean components uh, as part of the quick filter. Again, I hope that by now you know when to use one, when to use the other, or when to combine them both and where how you can make your search uh, as efficient as possible. But don't overcomplicate yourself because if that's the string you need to do to look for, look, put it between double quotes, and then you get even a better, actually half the time, on the actual search.